Judy Holliday was a stage, television, and film actress who was a good deal smarter than the majority of the characters she played. She remains best known for her performance in the 1950 film Born Yesterday, which was based upon the Broadway play of the same name. Sadly, Judy's successful Hollywood career came to an end all too soon as a result of her tragic death. Join Facts First as we explore how Judy Holliday was nothing like the women she played on screen. She suffered from depression as a kid. Judy Holliday was born June 21, 1921 in New York City. When she was only six, her parents separated. That left a dark cloud over her childhood. According to the late actress, she suffered from depression for the majority of her childhood years as a result. She was raised then solely by her mother. Her mother was a piano teacher, and she instilled in her daughter a taste for the performing arts. As Judy became more and more depressed into her teen years, she escaped by performing. In high school, she could be found performing in a wide variety of plays. Acting proved a healthy outlet for the young woman, and she started getting quite good. Judy ended up graduating from Julie Richmond High School in Queens. She then applied to Yale Drama School, but sadly wasn't accepted. But she found entertainment industry success regardless. She managed to secure a job at the Mercury Theater. This was operated by Orson Welles, and Judy worked there as an assistant switchboard operator. This gave Julie some early experience working in theater, but it didn't immediately pave the way for her to become a star. She had to work her way up the ranks, performing in low-level productions. Judy Holliday found fame with a comedy troupe. During the late 30s, Judy joined a comedy troupe called Reverse. Judy was one of five members, and the troupe found some moderate success in the Greenwich comedy scene. That led to an opportunity to perform at the Rainbow Room, a notable venue in Rockefeller Center. In turn, this led to the comedy troupe getting their own radio show on NBC. Judy Holliday's work with the Reverse not only allowed her to blossom as a performer, but also allowed her to become a great writer. The members of the troupe wrote their own material, and Judy was always sure to get a laugh. Later on, she became most well for playing dumb characters. This led to the public mistakenly believing Judy herself was dumb. However, as her early days with this troupe showed, she was actually quite the well-rounded thespian. She was no slouch academically either, and was said to have an IQ of 172. The Reverse eventually made their way to Hollywood, but by that time, they were down a member. One of the five members of the comedy troupe had to be let go as a result of a substance abuse issue. The troupe was still four members strong, though, and had hopes of hitting it big in Tinseltown. Judy ended up becoming the first member to receive offers from Hollywood producers, though she turned many of them down because she was insistent that the troupe be signed as a team. The Reverse appeared on screen together in 1944. Eventually, Judy signed with 20th Century Fox under the presumption that her fellow Reverse member would be cast in pictures alongside her. Sadly, they only ended up filming one movie together before the troupe dissolved. It was the 1944 musical film Greenwich Village. Following this, Judy's former troupe members went on to find moderate success elsewhere in the entertainment industry, while Judy went on to become a massive star by herself. She returned to New York City for a period of time and resumed her work on stage. Following Greenwich Village, Judy had come to believe there wasn't much of a future for herself in Hollywood. Thankfully, she was later proven wrong. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Born Yesterday made Judy Holiday a star. Judy's success on Broadway allowed her to return to Hollywood and sign a massive contract with Columbia Pictures. The contract was for seven years. Before starting her work in Hollywood, she could be found performing live on TV via a filmed performance of the play She Loves Me Not that was put on at the Ford Theater. Television was a relatively new medium at the time, and it allowed Judy to be seen by more eyes than ever before. It wasn't long after her return to Hollywood that she was given the opportunity to reprise her Broadway role in the Hollywood adaptation of Born Yesterday. The film was a hit, and it was largely due to Judy Holliday's performance, which netted her an Academy Award. Sadly, Judy's successful entrance into the upper echelon of the Hollywood elite came with a caveat, as the FBI was soon on her back about an alleged communist past. Judy Holliday's entrance into Hollywood came around the time of Hollywood's Red Scare. Numerous celebrities around that time were dragged through the mud for alleged communist affiliations, and a good deal found themselves blacklisted. Those who were blacklisted had their careers and oftentimes their lives destroyed. When the rumors first started spreading about Judy Holliday, the star began to fear she was going to share the same fate. 
Thankfully, Judy managed to convince the government she wasn't a communist. Judy Holliday survived her communist scandal. Although Judy was able to successfully convince the government she wasn't up to any nefarious communist activities, the investigation did cause her to be banished from film and television for a period of a few years. Thankfully, this didn't carry over into the world of cinema. The whole episode culminated when Judy testified before the Senate in 1952, where she was able to prove her innocence. She was given the okay to continue her Hollywood career, and the ridiculous scandal thankfully didn't hurt her prospects too much in the eyes of the public. She continued appearing in hit films over the course of the 1950s, with some of her other hits besides Born Yesterday, including The Marrying Kind and It Should Happen to You. The latter picture also starred Jack Lemmon. Once Judy was no longer banished from television, she also continued to make some notable appearances in the relatively new medium. Finally, she could be seen on stage again in the musical Bells Are Ringing. By the end of the 50s, it seemed like Judy Holliday was going to be a reliable presence in entertainment for a good long while. But tragedy struck in 1960, the same year she was cast to play the titular role in a play called Lorette. It was intended to showcase the life of an actress named Lorette Taylor. Sadly, the show didn't see the light of day. During the rehearsal stages, Judy fell severely ill. She was rushed to the hospital, where it was revealed she was suffering from breast cancer. Judy Holliday's Untimely End Upon finding out she had breast cancer, Judy underwent a mastectomy and went back to work. With the play Lorette being dead in the water, she returned to work in a new musical called Hotspot. That play premiered on Broadway in April of 1963. But not long after, she began feeling sick again. After 43 performances of the play, she became so sick she couldn't perform. It was found that the actress's breast cancer had returned and was slowly spreading throughout her body. She passed away in June of 1965 at age 43. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you find it surprising to hear that Judy Holliday had an IQ of 172? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Facts First or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.